The Sukhoi Su-27 flanker, interceptor, fighter bomber, and now also a long-range strike aircraft, is a truly remarkable aeroplane. Born on the 20th of May 1977 during the Cold War with the Warsaw Pact, very little was known about it in the West until a decade later when the Russian reconstruction or perestroika was instituted by Premier Mikhail Gorbachev in 1987. And with glasnost or openness, the West was in for some shocks, particularly from Soviet military aircraft, which had been assumed to be inferior, especially the Su-27 with its NATO codename of Flanker. This is the remarkable story of a remarkable aircraft and the dedicated team of professionals who, under the supervision of their late founder, Pavel Osipovich Sukhoi, created a masterpiece, the duel in the Russian crown. After the First World War, Pavel Sukhoi found his fascination with aircraft overwhelming. He graduated from technical school in 1925 and went to work for Tupolev, where he learned his trade. As late as 1927, the Red Air Force felt that it was using too many foreign aircraft. New designs were needed. Tupolev and his chief designer, Pavel Sukhoi, came up with the ANT-5, a single-seater fighter powered by the 460-horsepower M22 engine, giving a top level speed of 160 miles an hour. In June 1937, the first successful polar flight was made by the specially built ANT-25. But that first trip was full of incident when the aircraft had mechanical problems but just managed to limp into Vancouver. The second attempt a month later on July the 12th was a different story when Gromov, Danalin and Yumashaev took off from a specially sloped runway and flew 6,306 miles from Moscow to San Jacinto in California. They'd been airborne for an amazing two days, 14 hours and 17 minutes. What's more, they had 3,300 pounds of fuel left in their tanks. They not only broke the world distance record at that time, but the Americans began to realize just how near Moscow was if you flew over the pole. 
Another long-distance record was set up by an all-female crew flying in the DB-2 Sukhoi long-range bomber. 1939 also saw the birth of the Design Bureau, and it also saw a military aircraft from Sukhoi. It was christened Su-2. It was a short-range bomber powered by the 1,100 horsepower M88 radial engine, and it was used in limited numbers from 1940. But Pavel Sukhoi was an innovator and an experimenter. During the war years, he produced a number of experimental fighters and small bombers. In the jet age, Sukhoi continued to concentrate on fighter bombers and fighters of every description. From December 1949, the Sukhoi OKB was closed by Stalin in retaliation for a failed jet prototype. Sukhoi and his team went back to Tupolev, where they worked on their own projects until Stalin's death on the 5th of March 1953. The first product of the new Sukhoi Bureau was the S-1 prototype of this Su-7, which was originally designed as an air-to-air -air fighter, but because of the more agile MiG-21, it was changed to a ground attacker. In the spring of 1956, the Su-7 flew at twice the speed of sound for the first time. Sukhoi had also been working on a Delta Wing all-weather fighter, the Su-9, Given the code name Fishbot by NATO, the Su-9 was to become one of Sukhoi's great successes. During this time, his aircraft managed to break a number of speed and altitude records. Test pilot Vladimir Ilushin broke the altitude record by climbing to a staggering 28,852 meters or 86,556 feet. He then got the absolute sustained height record of 21,170 meters or 64,526 feet. Boris Adrianov then broke the world distance record for a fighter by flying 2,092 kilometers, that's over 1,300 miles without refueling. He was followed by Anatoly Kaznyov, who broke the record again by achieving 2,337 kilometers, that's over 1,452 statute miles. Pavel Sukhoi was now seeing the fruits of his labors, as his aircraft were only second down the line from the mighty Mikoyan and its MiGs. The Su-7B became the standard tactical fighter-bomber of the Soviet Air Force and was sold to many countries all over the world.